AMD's Ryzen 5000 series of processors took the market by storm when they launched in late 2020. But in a year and a half, a lot changes. And since then, Intel has retaken the performance crown for gaming with 12th gen and Alder Lake. Adamant not to be outdone, AMD is striking back to prove that it too has a market leading gaming option for users, introducing the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. So what's new, you ask? Well, the innovation for this chip comes in the deployment of AMD's new 3D vCache technology. Effectively, AMD trebles the L3 cache of a Ryzen 7 5800X processor and calls it a Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. Eight high performance cores and a copious 96 megabytes of level 3 cache has AMD worked its way back to the top of the gaming performance charts with this 410 pound processor. Let's take a closer look. Let's start out by making it perfectly clear that this Ryzen 7 5800X 3D processor is basically a standard 5800X with a slab of 3D vertical cache added onto the chip. It's the same 8 cores and 16 threads of Zen 3, the same 81mm squared chiplet built on the 7 nanometer TSMC manufacturer node, the same AM4 platform with DDR4 memory and 24 PCIe Gen 4 lanes, and the same 4 megabytes of level 2 and 32 megabytes of level 3 cache built into the core chiplet. The difference is, crucially, that 64 megabyte slab of stacked AMD 3D V cache. So what exactly is AMD 3D V cache, I hear you ask? Well, instead of redesigning the underlying Zen 3 chiplets to feature a higher quantity of cache, AMD instead decided to deploy a 64 megabyte slice of L3 on its own 41 millimeter squared TSMC 7 nanometer manufactured die and stack it above the CPU chiplet. The L3 cache die uses direct copper to copper bonding and through silicon vias for connection. This means that the added 64 megabytes can combine with the already present 32 megabytes of L3 cache on an 8 core Zen 3 CCD to appear as 96 megabytes seamlessly to the OS. The 64 megabyte stacked L3 dies cache also runs at the same clock speed as the CCD based sibling, so significant performance drop offs are not anticipated other than a slight pinch of added latency. Oh, and let's not forget about the structural silicon that is added atop the CCD to aid the mechanical integrity of the chip itself, as well as thermal performance for transferring heat through to that heat spreader. The new chip does however come with slightly lesser clock speeds than its effective predecessor I guess we'll call the 5800X and this is because there are some voltage operation limits when using the 3D V cache. Now AMD quotes 3.4 GHz base and 4.5 GHz boost for the 5800X 3D versus 3.8 GHz and 4.7 GHz for the 5800X. Crucially there's no overclocking support. And that's going to be an irritation for tinkerers who love nothing more than messing around in the BIOS. Though the 105 watt TDP for an 8 core Ryzen chip should give plenty of headroom for Precision Boost 2 to work its clock managing magic. Who exactly is this $449 8 core processor with sizable amounts of level 3 cache intended for? Well there are a few notable use cases, particularly where shifting data to the memory subsystem is concerned. There's an argument that software engineering or code compile may benefit from the added level 3 cache and that's particularly true if the software that you're using doesn't really scale past 16 threads or if the license is very expensive beyond 8 cores. Realistically though, AMD is pushing the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D as a gaming processor. We've already seen the benefits to gaming performance brought around by the improvements to cache on the Zen 2 and Zen 3 architectures so in essence, AMD is aiming for more of the same. Retail of $449 US dollars, which is £410 in the UK, AMD is certainly charging a pretty penny for the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. By comparison, Ryzen 7 5800X is about £310 to £320 in the UK. 12-core Ryzen 9 5900X is £365 to £375, and 16-core Ryzen 9 5950X is about £505. And it's also worth noting that the 12 and 16 core Ryzen chips already have 64 megabytes of level 3 cache by virtue of the dual CCD design. So AMD's new 8 core part with 96 megabytes of level 3 cache could be priced as close to the 16 core AM4 flagship as it is to the 8 core part that it effectively enhances. 
Versus Intel though, the 385 pound Core i7 12700K and roughly 560 pound Core i9 12900K are the notable contenders. And of course, I say that blissfully ignoring the Core i9 12900KS, which is just a stupidly priced product that nobody should really consider buying. We will be pitting the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D against Ryzen 7 5800X and Ryzen 9 5900X from AM4. And we'll be using the Core i7 12700K and Core i9 12900K from Intel, both of which will run an Asus Z690 Strix motherboard with 32 gigabytes of 5200 MHz C36 single rank Corsair Dominator DDR5. Our motherboard of choice is the superb Gigabyte X570S Aorus Master. And this is run in the latest BIOS revision, which also includes the necessary AGISA 1.2.0.6B BIOS required for 5800X 3D support. We're also using the latest AMD chipset software, which has highlighted 3D vCache support as of 7th of April when testing began. We've got 32 gigabytes of dual rank Corsair Vengeance LPX 3600 MHz C16 memory. The graphics card is a Gigabyte RTX 3080 Eagle OC, which is no longer the fastest kit on the block, but still packs enough sensible horsepower to analyze the CPU's gaming abilities. Cooling comes from a 360mm Acertec all-in-one liquid cooler, and we get clean juice from the Seasonic TX1000 titanium rated 1kW power supply. Our gaming tests will focus on the 1080p numbers, as it is the most pertinent resolution for highlighting high frame rate differences between these CPUs but we will also include 1440p data, as we know this is now the go-to resolution for high refresh rate enthusiast gamers. As always, if you want more details on our test hardware, our comparison data, our test procedures, head on over to the main KitGuru website. Looking at clock speeds for the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, we noted a typical all-core 4.4 gigahertz operation when running a rendering workloads such as Cinebench R23 NT. The boost clock that we observed peaked at 45.50 megahertz, but it was more typically around 44.50 megahertz. Those speeds are around 150 megahertz below the Ryzen 7 5800X in terms of all-core, and around 200 to 300 megahertz lower for maximum peak boost clock. But the new 3D vCache equipped chip was also running at considerably lower power consumption on the CPU package. The reduced operating frequency of the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, brought about by some of the voltage limitations for the new 3D vCache technology, will typically result in lower performance numbers versus the 5800X in productivity workloads. But it's gaming workloads that we're really interested in so we're going to have to see how that fares. We will, first of all, tick off some of the productivity results though, so let's take a look at those. Starting out with rendering workloads, we see the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D sitting below the 5800X by virtue of its lower clock speeds. Clearly, neither Blender nor Cinebench gain from the added L3 cache capacity, and the lower top-end boost clock results in lesser 1T performance too. It's more of the same with H.264 and H.265 media workloads using Handbrake, the signs thus far are that the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is not a processor for video editing or rendering workloads. 7-Zip does, however, give us a glimpse of the performance uplift that is available to applications that do leverage the CPU's memory subsystem. And speaking of memory, we don't see any real change to DDR4 bandwidth numbers for AMD's newest processor, though there was a consistent and repeatable increase in the recorded memory latency for the 5800X 3D versus our 5800X and 5900X competitors. 3 d Mark's Time Spy test clearly does not value the added L3 cache for its CPU scoring result. And the same can be said for the CPU profile test, which actually sees the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D demoted to bottom place by virtue of its reduced clock speeds versus the Ryzen 7 5800X. Gaming results are what we're interested in though, right? So let's have a look at those. Assassin's Creed Valhalla puts the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D to the top of our performance chart, albeit by a practically equal frame rate to the Core i9-12900K. This one is realistically a tie. Borderlands 3 is a clear victory for the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. This time, the 8-core chip and its 96 megabytes of L3 cache put in a convincing performance increase versus the next best chip in our chart, the Core i9-12900K. And we get another 3D vCache victory in Far Cry 6, 
albeit by a practically equivalent score to the Core i9-12900K. AMD's newfound performance improvement versus the standard Zen 3 chips is significant in this game. F1 2020 sees some huge average frame rates put up, and this benchmark shows preference for Intel's highly clocked Alder Lake chips, albeit by slim margins. Shadow of the Tomb Raider clearly likes AMD's added L3 cache, as the processor takes a commanding lead in this title. The performance increase versus Intel's Core i9-12900K is sizable, but the 15% plus uptick in performance from Zen 3 with 2D cache is even more impressive for AMD's 3D cache technology. There really isn't much in it when running Watch Dogs Legion, so it's fair to call this one close to a tie, even though AMD's new chip does technically pip the Core i9 to top spot in our chart. To summarize the 1080p game results thus far, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D does indeed seem to be the fastest processor in our charts. Yes, some of the top placed results are simply by virtue of error margin type differences, but a couple of games, Borderlands 3 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, show sizable performance victories for AMD's new 3D vCache technology, and none of our six games saw the Ryzen 7 handed a blowout loss either. I'd say that's a pretty impressive set of results if you're a high refresh rate gamer with enough graphics horsepower to push to those high FPS levels. Now focusing on 1440p gaming results, a more appropriate resolution for the hardware that we're talking about, here we expect to see the margin squeezed as the GPU performance is really pushed to the limit. There's little difference to note between any of the CPUs in Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1440p. The same can be said for Borderlands 3, though the new Ryzen 7 5800X 3D does take a small technical victory for average FPS coupled with a minor loss for 1% low numbers. Far Cry 6 is practically a tie between Alder Lake and the new Ryzen processor. AMD clearly deserves credit though for its performance improvements brought about with the new cache setup as highlighted by the jump in 1% low FPS data. F1 2020 shows very little difference between all of the CPU setups, though the 5800X 3D did deliver consistently higher 1% low FPS values. There's practically no difference between any of these processes in Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, as is the level of load placed on the GPU. And Watch Dog Legions at 1440p clearly had an axe to grind with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, thus resulting in AMD's latest offering sitting at the chart bottom, which is only two FPS from the chart top. As expected, the performance differences between CPUs and 4040p gaming are minor. Significantly higher GPU horsepower will be required to highlight the similar performance changes that we see at 1080p. What this highlights though is the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is able to maintain its highly competitive position versus Intel's Alder Lake competitors even when the gaming resolution is cranked up. Modest power consumption is what we've come to expect from AMD's Zen 3 architecture and the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D delivers just that. Running at lower voltage than the Ryzen 7 5800X, the 5800X 3D at least somewhat makes up for its clock speed and performance deficit by drawing less energy. This, in turn, reduces the cooling requirements for the chip, so that's at least some positive outcome from the reduction in productivity performance. Compared to the Intel chips, AMD's power usage advantage with the TSMC 7 nanometer process node is clear to see, even with a 64 megabyte L3 cache die added into the equation. The Ryzen 7 5800X 3D sample in our test setup has a reported package power exactly half that of the Core i9-12900K when rendering. Needless to say, the Intel 12th Gen part did not deliver double the performance in productivity tasks and was even marginally slower in our gaming tests. AMD's power efficiency remains strong. Despite its modest power usage, the 8-core Zen 3 chip continues to be a hot runner. Even with a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, we saw temperature readings close to the 80 degrees Celsius mark under an extended rendering workload. In essence, the 118 watts of power usage makes the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D relatively easy for a CPU cooler to handle, but the high chiplet thermal density and hot operating nature of AMD's processor means that you should not expect to see low running temperatures. What is positive to see is that the added cache die and structural silicon do not look to have introduced any major cooling challenges when the 5800X 3D is put under a CPU cooler commensurate of the processor's market positioning. AMD's Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is a really interesting processor to analyze as it feels as much a real world product as it does a technology demonstrator for AMD's future plans. If we look at the real world performance, then if you're interested in productivity workloads, this is not the processor you should be buying. That's simple. When it comes to gaming though, 
That's where the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D does extremely well. We saw results that make the new AMD processor with its 96 megabytes of L3 cache as fast as Intel's Core i9-12900K and sometimes notably quicker. You have to credit AMD for delivering sizable gaming performance increases without deploying a complete overhaul of the underlying Zen 3 architecture. So productivity performance is well below par and there's no overclocking support but power efficiency is very good as we typically expect from AMD and the gaming numbers are superb. Plus you have the benefit of the new 5800X 3D being a drop-in upgrade for users already on the AM4 platform and I really can't stress how much value that is to users who are on an older chipset motherboard or an older processor that just want a quick gaming shot in the arm. Perhaps I should be looking at this from the perspective of this is what us gamers have been wanting all along. A no-nonsense processor that delivers high FPS results that are near the top of the chart, even versus some of the 12th gen competitors, and doesn't waste any resources or any kind of focuses on those 3D animation and rendering tasks that gamers might not care about. Perhaps that's the best way to look at the 5800X 3D. So yeah, this 3D V cache equipped Ryzen 7 certainly is one of the more intriguing processors that I've analyzed in recent times. From a productivity workload perspective, it's almost certainly a complete no-go. From a mixed usage perspective, there are certainly better chips on the market. But from a purely gaming standpoint, this is a very compelling option, particularly if you're already on the AM4 platform or if you've already decided to spend Core i7 or Core i9 level money on your gaming system. With the new 3D vCache equipped Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, you're getting higher gaming performance, albeit at a higher cost, versus the Core i7. 12700K, but you do get the benefit of the AMD chip being on the considerably lower cost AM4 platform, and I think that point will be a potential deal sealer to a lot of enthusiast gamers. To finish up this one, I want to focus on the innovation side of things, as I do really feel that AMD deserves a lot of credit for bringing a whole new technology to the market. Perhaps the way in which I should view the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is as an interesting display of AMD's technology and engineering prowess in recent times. Intel went for an innovative new hybrid approach in Alder Lake and then reverted to the far from innovative brute force approach with the Core i9-12900KS. Not to be outdone by Intel's new mainstream flagship, AMD has hit back with its own innovative approach that is far more pioneering than simply adding more cores or ramping up clock speed. And that deserves some serious credit, particularly when such impressive performance in the domain of gaming is delivered alongside. Realistically, I think the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D is probably AMD testing the water for its mainstream deployment of the 3D vCache technology. And perhaps we'll see this technology as a bigger deployment as one of the fundamental features for future Zen processors. And if that is to be the case, then this first look at AMD's 3D vCache technology is going to be very excited for what is to come in the future. I've been Luke Hill for Kicker. Thank you for watching our video review of the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with AMD's new 3D vCache technology on board. Let us know what you think of this processor. Is this the gaming chip that you were really looking for? Something that focuses purely on pushing frame rates and nothing on rendering or productivity performance? Let us know if you're going to be upgrading to this in the comment section down below. As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. It really helps out the YouTube channel. Check us out on Discord, Patreon, Twitter and all the likes. Please do check out the written review on the main Kikuru website and check back for more content in the future.